All right, greetings everyone. This is uh, part two and how we will begin the process to make a sock mask. Um, obviously you want your turntable, your armature, and spray adhesive, pantyhose, and latex for at least this part of the video. Um, some of the other supplies won't be needed until a little later. But uh, first thing I like to do is go on and stretch my pantyhose out. So uh, kind of like a balloon, they, they tend to work a little bit better if you stretch them. So, uh, you know, just grab one end, stretch it out real good. I mean, feel free to even kind of pull it around and really put the stretch on it because that way it'll go over the armature a lot better. It'll already kind of be pre-stretched and uh, you'll be able to, so to speak, form it into all your little nooks and crannies on the armature, right up in the ears and everything. So. So once you got it good and stretched out, uh, just simply take and I like to line it up. The, obviously on any pair of pantyhose there's going to be a, a seam at the hip. I like to line those up where they kind of go over at the ears and I simply take and apply that. Just pull the pantyhose right over the top, pull it all the way down, kind of hook it on the bottom there and then pull it down in the front and hook it in the bottom here. Now, at that point, kind of pull the legs up on top and get them out of your way. Adjust the seams on each side. As you can see here, adjust that seam to where it will kind of fall behind, just behind the ear a little bit better. I, I find that you get a, a better wearing mask if that seam is falling right behind the ear. And uh, at that point, I like to take the, the legs and go on and pull them. I mean, if you want, hey, just go ahead and pick the whole armature up with the pantyhose because it'll put a decent further bit of stretch on it. And then just where these aren't in my way while I'm doing the rest of this, I like to tie it in a knot. Uh, well, apparently I forgot my Boy Scout skills. <laughs> But I mean, feel free to really get it cinched down tight because you're going to do stuff with the top to seal it up in a little bit and you want it stretched as good as possible. Just tie your little bow in the top, what have you, just to hold it that way. And obviously, get it back out of your way. Now, the pantyhose should be stretched over it. Uh, the seam should be as close to the ears as possible. Um, And at that point, feel free to, to even grab it around the, feel free to choke your armature. <laughs> just help stretch it a little bit further just to get it used to the shape it's going to be in. Um, at this point, I, well, I guess maybe you would want some latex paint or, or some type of marking agent. Um, I, I like to use latex paint simply because it, it sticks to the pantyhose nicely. But uh, for this particular example, I'm just going to use a little Monster Maker's Red, but uh, I'll take a little bit and dab it right on my finger, and then just dab it right on the nose, because then that way, in a minute, it'll tell me exactly where the pantyhose is supposed to be put back at. And I'll take put a little bit more, and I will adjust my seams one last time. So we know that's supposed to be at the bridge of the nose. It's going from here to here, a little red mark that I put on there. Maybe you can see it better on camera now. Uh, that way, it's marked there. Another little dab on my finger. I mean, I imagine you can use a permanent marker or what have you to mark it, but I just like to, the latex sticks well and Obviously, I can cover it up later 
with my latex mask paint. Okay, so I've marked the top of the head in two spots, here and here, and down the bridge of the nose, which will help me line up the pantyhose in just a moment. Okay, I like to, again, feel free to grab it around the neck, stretch it a little bit, just to make sure it's going to go where you want it to. Uh, you really only have to do this, I guess, if you're trying to make a, a full bib mask, obviously, that comes down this far. If you're just trying to do something just to the neck, I don't guess you'd have to pull it down this far, but I find you get a better mask if you do. Um, so that, I feel like a stretch probably well enough. So at this point, leave your knot in the top, but take the pantyhose back off of the armature. The latex should be dried, and just it should peel right up. There's still a little bit on the armature. There's still quite a bit on the pantyhose, and it's still marked out nice, so that uh, I know exactly where to put it in in a moment. Um, and this shouldn't affect, make sure it's dry, or this shouldn't affect the way everything is going to go together here in a moment. Now, this is the part where you're going to need your spray adhesive. Um, here in a moment, uh, I'm going to start spraying, and I'm going to spray around his ears, up inside his ears, um, up in the eye sockets nice and well, around the nose, up on, under the nose, in the lip area, of course right here, under the lower lip, and in the chin area and down across the collarbones and all of this other. Anywhere that there's going to be a nice contour, you're going to want to put the spray adhesive because when you put your pantyhose back on it in a moment, needless to say, you want the pantyhose to lay down and fit and form over this armature, uh, as I said in the previous video, kind of like applying a headliner in a car. Um, but that's, that's more or less the effect you're going for. Now, I did kind of leave out one of the uh, more needed items yesterday in that particular video uh, a respirator especially if you're using latex mask paints uh, you'll if you use if you just use an airbrush and you're spraying latex mask paint when you get to that stage of this and you don't use a respirator you are breathing in aerosolized latex paint which will produce an effect in your lungs like chemical pneumonia that you will never get rid of so you want a, a respirator um, a, a decent paint respirator looks like this. You can find them at Home Depot. These cartridges here pop off and you can replace them. I highly recommend you place them, uh, replace them at least, uh, well I guess it really depends on what you've been doing. Uh, I try to replace mine about once a year. But uh, anyway, this, this wears all over your head and needless to say, you're probably not going to be able to hear me that well when I put this on to start spraying the spray adhesive. So that's why I was saying all that I was. So let's move forward and I will quit talking. Definitely try to shake it up well. Okay. <coughs> well, it's 
a little strong. Um, now that that's done, you probably want to give it a few moments, let it get tacky, and uh, at that point we'll, we'll proceed with the, getting the pantyhose over it. In the meantime, uh, I can't stress you. I mean, I, you don't. I, I'm sure in a well ventilated area, you don't have to have a respirator to to use the spray adhesive. But being that here in my studio, I have to open up the window, and currently it is cold outside. Uh, although my window is currently cracked about three to four inches, uh, I still put on a respirator simply because, well, when you do as much as I do, uh, it behooves one to take care of their lungs. Um, at this point, I'd like to think that it's it's tacky enough. So uh, let me get this off. All right. Now, as you can see, where we marked it earlier, there's a red dot here and a couple on what would be the top of the head. Where we marked it out, obviously we want to try to put it back exactly like it was. Well, with the nice coat of the spray adhesive on there, that's a little easier said than done sometimes uh, because it wants to stick to everything. But you're going to be better off if you put the bow right back on the top of the head, kind of line up those two dots I put on top of the head, Sometimes, yes, you have to get creative like you're fixing to see me do. <laughs> Just to hold it still because everything is so sticky at the moment. Alright. And it needs some serious adjustment. Thank goodness the top of the head is not sticky. looking pretty good as far as the seams on the ears. We want to get this marker back where it should be right here and then gently pull down to where This should rest about like it was previously. That way when you get ready to press it all into place, it, it wants to go easily without much of a fight. Okay, now that you've got it pretty much back in place, seems are all the ears, it's all marked lined up with the red dots on the head, indeed. Okay, I like to start at the top of the head and just pull my hands down the sides like this to the top of the ears. If you sprayed it where you should have, at the top of the ears it should automatically start to adhere right around the ear and just tuck in right up underneath and behind the ears and yes it does want to stick to your hands I guess in that regard maybe I should have told you to get some acetone as well because acetone is about the only thing that takes the spray adhesive off with very little residue But push it up in the ears and around the whole form of the ear. Light come next to the brow, bridge of the nose, and right down the front of the nose. One time right here at the upper lip, and then right here in the lip. Now the reason for that is because it goes ahead and stretches from vertically the spans you're going to need for the face. At that point, you should go ahead and push in at the eyes. And it'll stick right to the side of the nose and everywhere that you sprayed that spray adhesive. But like I said, definitely give it a few moments because if you don't, it won't be tacky and you do want it to to get its stick, so to speak, because if you if you just try to apply it directly right after you've sprayed it on, it, it doesn't stick as well as one might like. I mean, you, it says spray adhesive, but it leaves you wondering. But, uh, yeah, push it up into the nose where it forms all the natural forms of the armature because ultimately this is going to fit on your face later and you want it to fit nice and snug. Now you see, 
as I stated earlier, kind of choke your armature. At this point, I've got it all nice on the face, but uh, you want to obviously start working on the chin. So, so kind of pull it down around the chin and where you've already started on the side of the neck, pull in on those two. Because obviously your head is bigger than your neck. So you're in essence creating a, a weird shape with the pantyhose. Now, I can also tell you that doing what I'm doing right now, um, I mean, if you do it this way, you'll probably have less difficulty, but even I have difficulty from time to time forming these pantyhose and making them stick exactly where I want them to. So don't get frustrated. You cannot get frustrated. You just have to, it, sometimes you have to, you know, maybe pull the pantyhose off and uh, start, start from the the neck down and spray it again but uh, try not to put too much on there because believe me it'll, it'll make getting the mask off the armature later much harder I think that's what we're going to have to actually do here stuck nicely all the way to the chin area I would stop right about there maybe hook it up over the ears or something where this will just stay out of the way like so pull this bit of leg on top of the head and here's our spray adhesive notice I'm not wearing the respirator this time in that regard I mean I'm pulling out all these tools a heat gun works nice too it'll help and as you, I'm sure you can already see how the uh, rotating turntable is making my job a little easier because I don't have to move the armature so much I can just spin it just because check out this dude do it using his head <laughs> so put the pantyhose back on it the way you had it before and it should already be stuck in much the way that you want it to but start this process at the base of the skull as we did previously and work your way down another thing too I've noticed that when you're working with the spray adhesive I find that if you tap it so to speak instead of just pushing it because if you just push it, it seems like it wants to stick to your fingers. If you tap it into place, now that doesn't work always, but see, you can see where it's starting to stick my hands together or gum them up some.
you want to try to work all of any bubbles that you might find in it out. You want this uh, pantyhose to be as tight up against the armature as possible. I mean, literally like a, a second skin. I find I've got a couple little bubbles here in the neck area, which is a common place for them, frankly. But uh, a little squirt. Definitely, because you're spraying on top, definitely let it get tacky. This time, don't don't even touch it, because uh, I believe me, it's a waste of your time. By the way, many armatures usually have kind of a ragged edge on just on the inside of them, and the, you'd be surprised how well the pantyhose just kind of hangs right on that in most cases. So. Now, the latex will inherently, as, as I kind of stated yesterday, it wants to remember its shape and it sticks to itself if you don't coat it and that kind of thing. So it's some, if you got some really small bubbles, let's say right around the ears, don't worry about that so much because after you, uh, pardon me, after you mark it, after you stipple it down with latex, many of those bubbles, you will just push them right back in and they'll stick because the latex is sticking to itself. But right now, the initial phase, you just want to make sure that the pantyhose is as form-fitting on this armature as possible. Now, the main time to, to really worry about these bubbles um, will be after your first coat of stippling latex on. Uh, I'm, I'm going to go briefly through that process, stippling it on, because, I mean, it, it's rather boring, and, and you want to do at least two coats. So cover the entire thing. We'll, we'll cover that in a minute. That way you're not getting confused. Okay. In my head, let's see. Okay, all the air bubbles are gone. All the way around the chin, that looks nice. Okay, now we want to address the top of the head. This is where those shears are going to come in that I was telling you about yesterday. Just go ahead and untie it completely. And pull both sides of it up to where now, the middle seam of the pantyhose is right here where my scissors are. So, don't pull that up too high up off the skull because that's really going to create some, some crazy stretch. But pull it up just a little bit, and then <clears throat> you'll be able to look at your pantyhose and be able to tell. Uh, there's a little line that kind of delineates the difference between the panty part of it and the hose part of it. And you want to cut about a quarter inch above the delineation line. So, quarter inch on the front is right there. And on the back is right there. This part, unless you're doing, I mean, that's like a whole nother project. But usually, I'm going to say, you don't have to keep these pieces. Just throw them away. However, I have twisted them up and made vines on, on masks. And I've done other things with them. So that's not to say that you can't use them. I just don't typically. Um, now, at this point, you obviously have two holes in the top of your mask where you cut the, the pantyhose off. So just kind of form those to where they are fabric tube and where they, for the most part, they're out of your way. Now, here's where you get the spray adhesive again. This time, you want to spray it right along the seam over each side about this far down. And at that point, you want to start fanning it out and getting it wide because as you pull these pantyhose into place to seal the top of this, it's, you're going to need more spray adhesive down here than the tiny little bit that's just a stripe up here. So uh, we're going to go ahead and apply that. Oh. 
Okay, at this juncture, you shouldn't need any more of the spray adhesive. Um, however, you, as I said previously, you might want to get some acetone because I, I've got a fair bit of stick on my fingers now. And to get that off, I mean, seriously, that's, that's about the best solvent is a little acetone. I guess you ladies just would take and use a little fingernail polish remover, huh? But uh, anyway, so now, now that that's up here and it's had a few moments to stick, I like to start with the back first because then that way, as I fix the front, it will fix the seam in the back if there's anything crazy going on. Um, so I'm going to cut the chatter and just do this. Just gently fold over the front. You don't need it to stick so much as you do the back. The back, you want to pull it up as far as you can to where it seals the whole mask. into place okay and then just simply just repeat with the front but like I said use the front to cover up any bad edge you might have created with the back and again the back of this tube is not so much as important as sticking this edge Okay, now, now that you've got the spray adhesive on your armature and you've got, a, uh, got the top sealed and obviously you're using a little spray adhesive for that as well, you definitely want to give it, I don't know, 10-15 minutes to uh, let it completely dry. Got a little bubble right here over the ear that I don't care for. We'll worry about that, I'm sure. Actually. And not always is this as entertaining, is it? It's much more entertaining wearing them. <laughs> I uh, normally listen to a lot of music in here when I'm making these. I'm not having to talk to myself slash a camera. So, I'm just taking, right now I'm just using the edge of my scissors, that way it doesn't put any more adhesive on my fingers, because it uh, is quite, quite sticky. But it is sticking much nicer around the ear this time. You can even use a popsicle stick. I, I keep a, a box of those right over there myself. Uh, tongue depressors, those are great too. I don't know, I can't say I, I apply paint with them or anything, but uh, they certainly work well as a disposable paint stirrer or whatever. Okay, so as you can see, there's that. That's done. Um, at this point, I would probably, my, my next phase is usually, it's, it's not quite completely dry on the top, but we'll go ahead and start with the face for the sake of doing this video. But I'll lay it down like so. And as I briefly mentioned yesterday, uh, sponge and latex. And I will take this and stipple on a layer of latex over the entire thing. I usually start with the face, as you see now. Um, and, and after I spray that on, after I stipple that on, I will let it completely dry. Completely. And then I will do a whole nother layer. So that's a total of two stippled on layers of latex before you ever start messing with prosthetics and bald caps and all that other business because you want to have a nice sturdy base to your mask. So yeah, just take and just stipple this right on and as I stated by using the sponges, you're going to make your latex go a lot further. I mean, you could just pour it up here, I guess if you're trying to do like an incredible melting man or something, but uh, you'll find that that gallon of latex won't go far at all. Doing it this way with the sponge, believe it or not, you'll find that you can make, mercy, you can probably make a good 5-10 masks, maybe if you're very frugal, with one gallon of latex doing it this way. Now I'm sure that, you know, Nelson, which is the, the fellow that owns the engineer guy, he would prefer you to buy a 5 gallon bucket like I do, and uh, 
you know, just hang on to it. But I know not everybody wants to spend a hundred and something dollars for five gallons of latex that they have no guarantee that they're going to use um, where I do. But just stipple it down. I don't so much focus on the top of the head, like I said, because that's uh, where the spray adhesive is currently trying to dry the most. And any little bubbles that we might have, like right now there's a little bit here on the lip, we'll go ahead and stipple latex in there now. And before I do the second layer, I will inspect this very closely and push all those little bubbles in. In the ears and the eyes and near around the cre all the crevices of the mouth. I'll take and make sure that all of that's pushed in and stuck to the armature really well. And then I'll actually apply my second coat, stippling it on as you see me doing now. Now, once you get this, uh, to make this process go a little faster, I do like to, once I get my first layer stippled on, I'll take it in there and in another room and I'll sit it in front of a fan. Uh, that way, late, the, the air blowing over the latex makes it cure a lot faster and obviously we can get this process moving along. Now, there's nothing more uh, unexciting, if you will, than watching paint dry slash latex. So, needless to say, that will not be part of this video process. So, stipple it all on. Get, you, get it good around the ears, too. Because, as I stated later, you'll be pushing those in before you stipple your second coat on. And you want everything to stick nice to where it's as form fitting as possible. Plus, uh, this particular type of sponge, as you stipple it on, it actually leaves a, a kind of a neat skin texture. So, gives the, the belief that uh, maybe a little more was done to it than just a sock mask. But uh, make sure you get a nice coat of latex. And, and in the first coat, it's always the worst because the, the pantyhose is sucking up a lot of it, and your sponge is it, it's freshly dipped, so it too is sucking up a lot of it. But uh, once you get it a decent coat on there, you'll notice it will start building up and looking like a decent skin texture. Currently, I think I have a little too much up here, so we'll just keep dabbing it. And doing it this way, yes, right now the ammonia smell is quite loud in here due to the fact that uh, that's what keeps liquid latex, or rather that's what keeps latex liquid. So. Probably around the neck is going to be your hardest points to stipple because it wants to create little lines sometimes. But uh, as you can see, I've got the majority of the front done with the first layer. And I usually do a little bit right here, which connects to the front. And again, where this, I want to make sure this has plenty of time to, to stick well. I will also give me a space where there's no latex where I can spin it and hold on to it from the top. But go ahead and just continue to stipple the whole thing down. With a single layer of latex. Sorry, spin that around a little bit where you can see what I'm doing.
slowly but surely you get that first full coat of latex over the whole thing. Now, as I said, you got to be careful using the sponge sometimes because you can get some, some really thick globs in places. Make sure you stipple those out, so to speak, to where it's not a big glob of latex sitting in one spot and it's nice and thin and stippled on with a decent looking skin texture, so to speak, in another. Just be patient and you'll make a happy mask. <laughs> so, yeah, just stipple it right on. And give it as low as you can. I did, I did the same thing on the front. I, I got down to you know the very edge of the armature if I can. And otherwise, I did the same thing here on the back. Went as low as I possibly can. You can always trim that off later. Um, I feel like in the creation process, Give yourself more leeway than you really need. That way, you know, if you want to trim it off a little shorter than that, fine. But uh, if you happen to be wearing it with a costume that you need it to go all the way down and uh, the neckline of your costume is low, well, then you've got plenty to, to go down on that neckline and make your look believable. <coughs> There's a full single layer of latex over the entire thing except for right across the top and we'll do that now and uh, once you get this single layer as I stated it works best if you would probably go to another room or you can set one up in this in a room while you're doing it you just don't want to have it on while you're trying to actually stipple because then it, it makes things dry a little quicker than you want them to but uh, now that's got a full coat and this won't dry in the time it takes to uh, go in and put it in front of a fan for this to dry. But once it is, it is fully cured with a single coat, come in and, and like I said, press around all the little bubbles and the little cracks and crevices around the ears and the nose and the mouth and all that. Make sure it's really nice and snug against the armature. Then, of course, do your second coat of latex. Again, place it in front of the fan and let that cure. Once it's good and cured with two full coats of latex, then we'll come back and we will begin the actual uh, application of the facial prosthetic in the ball cap. So uh, go ahead if you're if you're following along as this is produced. Uh, th this is where you get to take a break at this point. Go put it in front of a fan, play your uh, fruit ninja or whatever it is you do, and <laughs> let it dry. Give it two coats. See you back here in a little bit. Go make stuff. <laughs>